CBB's Media Production presents What a Word from the Lord. I'm your host, Stevie R. Butler. Ladies and gentlemen, this radio show is dedicated to spreading the truth of God's Word, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. We are grateful that you are tuning into our radio broadcast this evening. This radio show is brought to you by loving and faithful members of the Churches of Christ. We would ask that you would take out your Bibles and study along with us. We are very great. We are very excited. Have a very exciting show planned for your spiritual enlightenment and your edification. If you would like to contact us while we are on the air this evening, you can give us a call to the live show at 713-955-0508. If you have any questions or comments for my co-host or any of my special guests on this radio show, you can send me an email to srbutler1009 at yahoo.com or you can Call the Carolina studio at 910-491-6405. Now, again, this program is brought to you by members of the Churches of Christ. And if you need any assistance locating the congregation in your area, please feel free to contact us. Now, folks, get out your Bibles and study along with us here on What a Word from the Lord with your host, Stevie R. Butler. Stevie B's Media Production presents What a Word from the Lord. I'm your host, Stevie R. Butler, and this radio show is being broadcast from the Carolina studio in the great state of North Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, we are just grateful for the privilege to be able to bring you a program where we as Christians and members of the Churches of Christ can share our faith and preach and teach the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ on a weekly basis. So before we go into our program for this evening, I would ask that you would bow with me in a word of prayer that we may thank God for this opportunity. Let us pray. Our most kind, gracious, loving, heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for allowing us to go through the various activities of the day and placing it on our hearts that we are on this broadcast at this point in time. And we are prepared now to present a portion of your holy 
and Divine Word. Father, pray that you will be with my special guest speaker, Dennis Lamar Melton, in the first segment. And also my co-host, Edward Bishop, as they proclaim the Word of God on this broadcast. We pray that you will continue to bless their efforts as they sow the seed of the kingdom and bless their families as well. Father, we pray that you will be with our listeners who are tuning into this broadcast. We pray that they may listen well. And we pray that they may consider their eternal stance before you and their soul salvation. Father, we thank you so much for Jesus and all that he means to us in this life and in the life to come. We thank you for his precious sacrifice on Calvary. For without such a sacrifice, Father, we would not even have a hope of eternal life. Father, we ask that you will forgive us for the transgressions of our own heart. We know that as long as we're in the flesh, we will often say and do those things that are not pleasing in your sight. And Father, we pray that we always have a repentant heart, that we'll be willing to confess our faults one to another and be willing to pray one for another. Father, continue to bless us and keep us all the days of our lives. And if we have been faithful until death, Father, we pray that you would save us. For us in Christ's name, we do ask it all. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for tuning into the broadcast. We have a great show lined up for you on this evening. My special guest speaker in the first segment of this broadcast will be Dennis Lamar Melton. He's been on this show before. And those brethren who are uh, faithful in their proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, they always have a place on this radio show. And that's what this show is all about, ladies and gentlemen. It is our objective to get the word out. We want to preach the word. And I want faithful gospel preachers who are willing to do just that, to come on this broadcast. They are always welcome to do so. And in the second segment of the broadcast, we have the community corner. we got my homeboy, Darrell Ray Davis. He'll be... He's a representative of Legal Shield, and he'll be making his presentation on the broadcast as well. And in the third segment of the show, my co-host, Edward Bishop, that preacher out of Niagara Falls, New York, he'll be bringing us a lesson from the Word of God as well. And I'll be closing out the show with a lesson as well. So thank you all for tuning in to What a Word from the Lord. I'm your host, Stevie R. Butler. The next voice you hear after this song will be that of my special guest speaker, Dennis Lamar Melton. Enjoy the show. Open your Bibles now. And open your mind and let's have a great show. God bless you. Things will work out just like you said. 
From the Lord with your host Stevie R. Butler. Now, my special guest speaker, Dennis Lamar Melton, and his subject, God is Real and has given us the solution to every problem. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Dennis Melton, and once again, I thank the God of Heaven for this opportunity. I thank the God of Heaven for Brother Stevie R. Butler and those that make this uh, this broadcast possible. Uh, we want to always give God the praise and the honor and the glory for each and every day he gives us. And we want to always realize that God is real. Uh, no matter the circumstances in life, do not allow the chaos that we see in our world, do not allow the problems, the negative problems in your life, or do not allow anyone to cause you to start losing hope or faith in God, for those of you that have been born again. And I would say to you, those of you who are not born again or who do not know God, trust me that God is real. The Bible says in Psalms 19, for the heavens declare the handiwork of God. So when you look up into the heavens, that's the handiwork of an almighty God, an intelligent creator. And so the evidence is all around us that God exists. And the reason I wanted to do this topic is because uh, I've hear so many uh, people say, uh, "I wonder why God, where God is at in all of this chaos. I wonder uh, is God real?" And for some saints, they even starting to lose a little bit of their faith, uh, wondering where is God? Why is God allowing this to happen? Well, we must be assured that God is real. We must be assured that God has given us the solution to every problem that life can throw at you. Uh, one of my launching scriptures for that is Second Peter three. I'm sorry, Second Peter one three, where it says that God has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. God has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. For those of us who've been born again, the Holy Spirit has equipped us with every spiritual tool to walk this Christian walk. 
And it also teaches us in 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 15, that the Spirit of God compels us to live for Almighty God. And so I would say to you, for those who are troubled in this life, for those who are questioning whether or not there is a real God, you can rest assured that the Bible says in the book of James chapters 4 and chapters 5 that every good thing comes from above. So when you see the good deeds uh, being practiced throughout the lives of other people, that good deed came from above. And the greatest good thing that comes from above was the Son of God. For the Bible says in John three sixteen that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And we know that God is good. He was good enough to love us and give us something awesome and good from above, and that is his son, Jesus. God gave us the solution to the sin problem, and that solution is his dear son, Jesus Christ. Because when sending Jesus Christ, he sent hope. He sent redemption. He also gave us the teachings of the gospel through Jesus Christ. He gives, us, he gives us the church by Jesus Christ, the church which Jesus Christ promised to establish in Matthew 16, 18. The church that Jesus Christ shed his blood for, according to Acts 20 and 28. So that we know that God is a forgiving God and a loving God and a God who is real. Because when he created man, he gave man morality. He gave man a moral conscience, uh, a conscience of good and evil to be able to decipher good and evil. And so that moral conscience is able for man to uh, see what is good and also have a conscience of that which is evil. And so we know that God is real in the mere fact of our creation. Uh, Nobody created himself. It takes intelligence to create intelligence. The earth and the sun didn't just appear without intel- without intelligence, no more than our cars and homes did not just appear. It took intelligent mind, designers, and architects to design our cars and our homes. Well, it took intelligence to also design us, to design our uh, our frame, our body, our mind. The Bible says God made us in his image. Man has the ability to think, reason, and govern, and man can imagine. And so all of these comes from an intelligence that man did not create. So we are reminded constantly that God is real. Many people think God is real just because he doesn't show up when they think he ought to show up. But God knows everything. He's everlasting. And because he's everlasting, he's not governed by time the way you and I are. You know, God takes his time. And when he decides to come, he's always on time. And so my dear friends and my dear brothers and sisters out there, we need to be reminded that God is real and God has given us the solution to every problem in life. The ultimate problem that plagues man is the sin problem. Everything that's happening in our life, uh, the different denominations, the different religions, divisions, all of these can be traced back to sin. All of these can be traced back to man's man's deviation from the will of God somewhere in his lifetime. But God has given us a solution to that sin problem, and it is Jesus Christ. And we must get back to the teachings of Jesus Christ. We must get back to the examples of Jesus Christ. If we want to know how to love, we need to go back to Jesus Christ as the example. If we want to know how we should treat one another, we should go back to Jesus Christ as the example. If we want to know what doctrine to teach, that man should all be saved. We must go back to Jesus Christ as the example. He gave the Great Commission, and he said, Go ye therefore and make disciples uh, unto all. Go to every nation making disciples, teaching them uh, what I have taught you, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son of the Holy Spirit. That's Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Then we get Mark's account of the Great Commission. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16, when he says, um, go ye therefore into all the world and teach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized, that's water baptism, shall be saved. So if we want to know how to fix any problem in life, we need to go back to Jesus Christ. We need to go back to his example. Many of us think that we have become, many 
uh, people have gone on and leaned to their own understanding. And the Bible in Proverbs 3, 5 uh, teaches us not a, that a man should not lean unto his own understandings. No matter how smart he is, no matter how educated he is, he cannot direct his own steps. He cannot come up with the solution to the sin problem. Only God can do that, and God has done that. The Bible teaches us that we must repent of our sins, according to Luke 13, 3 and 5, and also Acts 2, 38. And the Bible tells us that we must be kept filled with the Spirit, according to Ephesians 5, 15. It says, do not be drunk with wine. I'm sorry, Ephesians 5, 18. Do not be drunk with wine, but rather be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, in order to maintain a, a good, healthy walk with the Lord, in order to be able to quench the fiery darts of the devil, we need to continue to be filled with the Spirit, meaning the more that we study the will of God, the more that we meditate on the will of God, uh, the Spirit can guide us and strengthen us in areas that we need it. So not only does God give us the solution to sin, which the ultimate solution is Jesus Christ, because with Jesus Christ comes everything. But God also gives us to the, to the, the solutions to everyday issues, uh, such as uh, hate, injustice as a result of hate, poverty, depression, oppression, anxiety, and division. The Bible teaches on all of these issues. And I know a lot of times people don't feel that the Bible addresses these issues, but these issues the Bible do address. And we need to go back to the Holy Word of God to deal with these issues, and we'll see a positive change. I have seen these positive changes. I've seen God deal with the stresses of the children of Israel when they was in the wilderness. And we've seen God kept his promise with those people. And Joshua and Caleb would lead the children of Israel over into the promised land. God is never slack concerning his promise. And we know that God can deal with every issue. And so, and when it comes to dealing with hate, then you go to the Bible and you look at Matthew 5, 43, where it teaches us not to hate our enemies, but to love our enemies. And loving our enemies, we, we open the door of teaching our enemies the word of God. And when you teach your enemies the word of God, there is a great chance that they will submit to the word of God and become your brother and sister in Christ and cease being your enemies. Because hate is a is a uh, dangerous word, and it's a dangerous emotion to have. Uh, it also teaches us to love in John thirteen thirty three through thirty four. That's one of the greatest commandments that God gives His people in the New Testament. In John thirteen thirty three through thirty four, He said, a "New commandment that I give you that you love one another. By this man should you man should know that you are my disciples by the love that you have for one another." And when it comes to the, the, the issue of poverty, let's be real. In our country, there's a lot of poverty. In the world, there's a lot of poverty. And about 20% of that is due to man's laziness, but 80% of that is due to man's greed. And greed is one of the seven deadly sins. But the solution to that is the word of God. It is going back to uh, the holy word of God given to us by Christ. He says, if you love your enemies, then you would love them as yourself. And if you will love your brother as you would love yourself, you wouldn't see him in a poverty situation. You wouldn't help him. The Bible says in Luke chapter 6, verse 35, it says, love your enemies and lend to those who are in need, looking for nothing in return. For great is your reward in heaven. See, when you have the love of God in you, you will share with those people. And you would share not only uh, your means, you would share your time, and you would share your wisdom. And you're not looking for anything in return because you're looking for your great reward in heaven. So uh, the issue of poverty uh, can be, is, is dealt with from the scriptures. Of course, I can give so much more, um, but my time is limited, and I don't want to elaborate on that. I'm just trying to make the point that God gives us a solution to every issue, every issue. And you don't have to uh, make an excuse that God doesn't exist because these issues exist. God has never given us a false sense of security. 
God let his disciples know in Matthew chapter 10 that men shall persecute you for my sake. He never promised that being a Christian and had walking this Christian walk would be an easy one. It's going to be one that's going to try you, that's going to try your faith. But you must not lose uh, your faith in God. You must not grow weary in well-doing. Another passage that deals with poverty is 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, Paul writes to Timothy in verse 17. He says, charge them that are rich in this life or in this world that they be not high-minded. One of the issues with being rich is people become arrogant. That's one of the reasons Jesus says it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter heaven. He didn't say a rich man could not enter heaven. He said it would be much harder for one. And the reason it's harder because with the more more money and riches they have, the more arrogant and high-minded they become. But Paul says that these men should not be high-minded in verse 17 of 1 Timothy chapter 6 nor trust in uncertain riches in the living God. If you want to put your trust in anything, it's the living God. Because Jesus makes it clear in Matthew chapter 6 that uh, do not set your hearts on the things of this world because thieves can take it from you and the rust can also take it from you. But you put your trust in God because God is everlasting. So you put your trust in the everlasting living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Verse 18 says that they do good, they that be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to share. And by doing so, verse 19 says, laying up and store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on to eternal life. One of the reasons you give and you share is because it's a God trait. It is a God trait to give and to share. For God gave something that is priceless, and that is only begotten Son, to redeem all of mankind. So giving to those who are in need is a God trait, and you will be laying hold on to eternal salvation by doing so. You remember Jesus, and the reason Paul writes this is because Jesus taught this in his ministry. He told the rich and ruler on one occasion that asked him, uh, teacher, what must I do to have eternal life? He said, keep the commandments. He says, I've done so. He said, you lack it one thing. Sell what you have and give to the poor. You shall have eternal life. And so we see that God deals with this poverty uh, issue in his word. He deals with hate. All of these are falls up under the umbrella of the sin issue. And God established his church so that we can become a part of his church, be saved, and so that we can fellowship with one another and bear one another's burdens. Also, in dealing with uh, anxiety, if you want to deal with anxiety, you go to the scriptures and you'll go to Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. And in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, Uh, Paul says, be anxious for nothing. That's another word for anxiety. He says, be anxious for nothing. But rather through prayer and supplications, make your request be made known to God. I am a testament that God uh, hears prayers. And so many of you are a testament that God hears prayers. So to those out there who have anxiety, there's no need for you to be anxious for nothing. God is the one who can give you all that you need. So there's no need to have any worry uh, in your life because God is the type of God that answers prayers. He's the type of God that doesn't leave his people uh, uh, to see lack or begging for bread. He's a God of substance. He's a God that provides. So don't let your anxiety and your worrisome situation cause you to doubt that there's a real God because God is real. God is real. And also the issue of division whether it's division in your home, whether it's division in religion, we need to go back to Christ. Christ prayed on one occasion in John chapter 17 that all of his followers may be one, one mind, having the same mind and understanding just as he and his father has. That's in 1 John chapter 17, verses 20 through 24. He prayed that all of them may be one as he and the father are one. You cannot possibly be one when your 
mindsets and your teachings are different. The teachings must be the same teachings. The Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit was sent and Jesus Christ promised that the spirit of truth would come, Jesus said the spirit will remind you of the things that I say. The spirit was not going to come and start teaching something different than what Jesus had already said. To do so, they would not be one. But because they are one, the Holy Spirit will speak and remind the disciples of the same things that Christ had already taught. And so this uh, problem of division is answered within the scriptures. And you can go to Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And you'll see that Paul addresses that we should be of the same mind. Being of the same mind is uni- is unity. And God wants unity because there is unity within the Godhead, between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They are one united. And all of these issues that's going on, that's causing the confusion in life, the problems in life, uh, these issues are a result of man's deviation from the will of God. You can trace all of the, the chaos. It is a deviation from the will of God. And when people try to speak the truth and they don't want to hear it, that is because you also have an adversary of God and his children that walk it to and fro. And he's planted uh, seeds, and those seeds have become tares in the world, mixed up with the wheat. But rest assured that God is going to come and separate the wheat from the tear. So you shouldn't have. You, so there should be no worry because of all of the chaos. God is going to deal with that. He said he's going to come and he's going to separate the wheat from the tear. And even the devil knows he has but a short time. So we must we must be uh, confident in the fact that God is real. I don't have time to go into the four arguments uh, used to prove that God is real. One of them is the tele- teleological uh, argument that uh, teaches that for every design, there must be a designer. Nothing is designed without a designer. I think I've already covered that earlier in this lesson. Nothing is designed without a designer. Our homes, our buildings, our cars all had a designer. They did not just happen. They did not magically appear. Our bodies, our mindset, our brain is very complex. Our our bodies and our brain constantly are sending signals uh, to certain points of the body where there is pain, where there is an issue. Uh, well, that was put together by a strategic designer, and that designer was not man. That designer is the most high God. Okay, when we look at astronomy, when we see how the worlds are framed, we see how they orbit the sun and how they do so in such fashion, uh, that, that's something that man did not create. A designer set that in motion, and that ultimate designer is Almighty God, Almighty God. And we can look at uh, we can look at nature. We can look at so many things that man did not have his hand on. Now, man is trying to play God, unfortunately, by splicing genes, but he does not have to splice genes. If he let, let nature alone, nature would take care of itself because God is the one that set nature in motion. God set nature in motion. Isn't it amazing that out of all the species of animals, they have their strategic, uh, they have their strategic pattern. I mean, the tiger has its stripes. Oh, the zebra has its stripes. Uh, the birds have different uh, sets of wings. Uh, but that's all by a strategic design, and they for a specific purpose. But all of that creation points back to the ultimate creator. So for all of those out there who, who who I had discussions with and who feel that God isn't real because of things, are, all of this chaos, so much things are happening in life, or things are happening in my life, you can rest assured that God is very real, you know. And for all of those who say, well, we need God right now, you have God right now. You have him right now. You have him right for everyone that will stand up and do that which is good, okay, Uh, that's a God trait. Remember, all good things come from above. The gospel is good. It came from above. Everything, the good moral conscience that man has, that comes from above from God. 
So when there's injustice out there and there are people that's going to stand up and, and fight against that injustice, those people are doing a good thing, and that good thing comes from above. So you see God every day. It depends on your outlook, your perspective. God shows himself to you every day through the warm smile uh, of a person, uh, through the life of a person who was lost in sin, lost in drugs, but someone brought the light of the gospel to them. Now their whole life has been changed. They've given their life to God, and now they're a totally different person. You are witnessing the power of God manifesting his life in the life of somebody who was lost in darkness. That's the power of God that you are witnessing. So God is very well alive. God is very well um, much uh, in tune with man. But you can't expect to see God physically because his glory would kill you. And so you have to understand God shows him, shows himself through the lives of his people, through his creation, and through nature. And so always rest assured that when bad things are going on in your life, uh, for every bad thing that's going on in your life, there's a good person willing to do something good about it. And that's the spirit of God compelling them. That's why Paul says in 2 Corinthians five fourteen through 15 that the spirit of God compels us to live for him. So when you have good Christian people out there, born-again Christian people, people who have been baptized for the remission of their sins, and they're out there doing these good deeds, and those who have that moral conscience to do that which is good, that is a God trait. That is a God trait. And then when they do good, they're not doing it for an evil, hidden agenda. Because even evil knows how to give good gifts. But you have to understand evil only does the good to mask. It's hidden agenda. God has no hidden agenda. He wants you to do good so that he can get the glory. That's what Matthew 5 teaches in Matthew 5, 16 through 19. He says, let your light shine that men may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So always understand you can, differ, you can, you can decipher those who are doing God's will. Because they will always give Almighty God, Jehovah Yahweh, the glory. Any times, people, if a person is self-centered, then that person there was not sent by God. Because every time something is to be done, good is to be pointed back to the Most High God. And when it's pointed back to the Most High God, he gets the glory. That person is sent by God. And we must rest assured that God is real. Always remember and know that God is real, and he has given us the solution to every problem. You want to know the, to, uh, the solution to the problem of all of these denominations? You go back to God. He only established one church. He only established one church, and he made it simple. He established one church by where all men can be saved. If you can understand that there's only one God, one Lord, according to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4, you have no problem understanding that Jesus is the one Lord sent by God. Well, why have a problem that that one Lord only has one body, that he only promised to establish one church? Uh, God only needs one. God knows exactly what he does. He established one church to eliminate the confusion, for he's not the author of confusion. So when people tell you that any church would do, they just misinformed have not been enlightened, they have not been taught righteously. Because any church will not do when God only established one. And that one is going to give the teaching and the doctrine that Christ gave the apostles to teach. The apostles were chosen by Christ to lay the foundation according to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 21. I'm sorry, verses 20 through 21. For the apostles laid the foundation and they laid their foundation based on Jesus Christ, who is the chief cornerstone. And so we must understand that God only needed one. He established one because one simplifies and eliminates the confusion of many different churches. He only needs one, and that's what he established. And when you get into that church and when you get into the church of Christ and when you obey the gospel, then you learn of the teachings. You can learn of the hope 
which God has given you. You can learn that God has an answer to all of these everyday issues. And you can know that God is real and he's fighting and he's fighting for you with his own power. And he also fights for you through the hearts and mind and actions of his born again, Christians and saints that are standing up teaching against all of the false doctrines that are going out, helping those who are in need, those who are victims of storm disasters. That's God helping you through his people. So God helps you every day. Always remember that. Remember that God is real. He gives true salvation, and he is the ultimate solution to the problems of everyday life. May God bless and keep you, and may you bless and keep God in the center of your life. God bless you. These are the announcements for the events and activities in the Churches of Christ. If you would like to have your events or activities announced on this video broadcast, please contact my news telephone business line at 910-491-6405. In the Carolina studio, or send me an email to srbutler1009 at yahoo.com. On October the 1st through the 4th, 2018, the Southeastern Lectureship 2018 will be hosted by the West Oak Grove Church of Christ. And that address is 3455 Highway 51 South, Hernando, Mississippi, 38632. For hotel information and registration, please contact the Ministry Evangelist Terry D. Wallace Sr. at telephone number 662-449-4191. On August the 31st through September the 3rd, 2018, the 87th Annual Homecoming and Empowerment Conference will be held at the Woodland Forest Church of Christ, and the theme will be Moving from Emancipation to Sanctification, and that address is 1515 North Forest Street, Valdosta, Georgia, 31601. Their website is woodlandforest.com. For more information, please call 229-242-7628. An administrative evangelist is Leroy Butler Jr. On June the 28th through July the 1st, 2018, the 5th Annual Youth Ministry Camp, and their theme will be Disconnect to Reconnect. And the ages will be 5 through 25 years of age. And their website is www.tymc.org for registration. The host congregation will be the Belmont Church of Christ, and their address is 2700 Cypress Creek Parkway, Houston, Texas, 77068, zip code. For more information, please call 281-440-1910, and their email is belmontchurchofchrist at belmont.org. On June the 9th through the 13th, 2018, the 8th, annual homecoming celebration concert and revival of okay yeah the 8th annual homecoming celebration concert and revival will be at the Shop Road Church of Christ and that address is 20 2400 Shop Road Greensboro North Carolina 27406. The telephone number is 336 272 0354. Their website is shoproadcoc.org. The guest speaker will be Dr. O.J. Hayward. And the nightly services will be at 7 p.m. On July the 16th through the 20th, 2018, the 41st, the 41st annual Southeastern. Youth for Christ Conference will be held at the Georgia Southern University at Statesboro, in Statesboro, Georgia. For registration information, please call 1-888-YOUTH-77. And just to remind you, Stevie B's Media Production presents, we are airing live radio shows here on Blog Talk Radio. 
on Tuesday night from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm hosting a live show, What a Word from the Lord, Stevie R. Butler Radio Show. And each week we will have guest speakers presenting lessons from the Word of God. We have a new segment, the Community Corner, that's for small business owners and entrepreneurs who have products and services that they're offering to our community. Also, my co-host, Edward Bishop, he's one of my co-hosts from the Gospel Light Radio Show. He'll be bringing a lesson from the Word of God as well. And then on Thursday night, I'm hosting a live show from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll be hosting the Gospel Light Radio Show. And on that show, I have eight co-hosts presenting lessons from the Word of God. But each week, I have two co-hosts who will be presenting lessons on the air. I'm taking questions from my Shout It Out platform on social media, Facebook, and posing those questions to my co-hosts. On Friday night, I'm hosting a live show from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're hosting a live show, Stevie B's Acapella Gospel Music Blast Radio Show. And the first week of the month, I'm interviewing artists, uh, debuting new music, featuring old music. The second week of the month, my daughter, Tati B, she'll be co-hosting that show with me. She'll be doing my whole playlist. Third week of the month, I'll be doing my Top 20 Countdown show. The fourth week, we'll be doing the Talent Search show. I give my listeners 60 seconds to stand on the world stage and sing your song. First and second place prizes will be awarded by my special guest judge for each show. And once a quarter, we'll be doing the Marathon Show. That's a three-hour show of whatever artists that we're featuring, the artists or group that we're featuring on that show. We'll just be playing their music on that particular show. If you are an artist and you want your music played on this Friday night show, you can send me your MP3 formatted tracks via Dropbox. And my email is srbutler1009 at yahoo.com. Dot com. You can now listen to all of my shows through my affiliate internet station. My on-demand episodes can be heard now through iHeartRadio, iTunes, ACARadio.net, iWaveRadio, MCCBroadcasting.com. We air my shows Monday through Friday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can hear my shows through YouTube. You can go to my YouTube channel, BBR Butler, a.k.a. TV. And you'll be able to see those on-demand episodes. Also, the Church TV Network is aired by show. Go to Acapella Radio. And you can go to my website, Spreaker.com. That's S-P-R-E-A-H-R.com. And just type my name, Stevie R. Butler, in the search bar. And you'll be able to see those on-demand episodes. You can call into the live show at 713-955-0508. And the link to the, to the on-demand episodes is www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash gospel light radio show also want to thank my sponsors who are sponsoring my program sharon norwood out of chicago illinois her her organization is organo they, their slogan is a health product for healthier living and yvonne blazing cracker goop she lives in nashville tennessee and that will conclude our announcements Have you ever had a friend like Jesus who would wash away your sins, make you hope up Have you ever had a friend like Jesus who would die? Thank you.
from the Lord with their host Stevie R. Butler. Ladies and gentlemen, I was just notified that my guest in the Greenwich Corner will not be able to do the show tonight. So we're going to go ahead and let my co-host Edward Bishop go ahead and do his segment. All right, Edward, you're on. All right, so first of all, once again, thank Brother Butler for giving me this opportunity to present to you a lesson from God's engrafted word, which is able to save our soul. More importantly, above all, I want to thank the God of heaven for giving me the strength and the ability to be able to present to you a lesson on this evening. For it is in him that we live, we move, and we have our very being. We are because he is. Our illness is simply wrapped in his isness. Now, having said that, if you have your copy of God's in graph words, which is able to say our very soul. If you will, turn with me to the book of Job. Job, the first chapter. I don't know how much of this I'm going to get through this tonight, so I might have to do a part two. There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared the God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yokes of oxen and 500 she asses. In a very great household, so that his, this man was the greatest in all the land of the east. And his son ran and in their houses. Everyone his day and sent and called for their three sisters 
to eat and to drink with them. And it was so. When the days of the feasting were gone about the Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their heart. Thus Job did continue. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, When comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, For going to and fro in the earth, and for walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? But there was none like him in right man, one that fear of God and the truest evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for not? Hast thou thou made an hedge about him and all about his house, and all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the word of his hand, and his substance is increased in the land. Put forth thy hand now and touch all that he has. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went from the presence of the Lord. I want to speak as the Spirit shall guide. Which is thought and planted on our mind. Hast thou considered my servant? Hast thou considered my servant? The book of Job, of trials and tribulations. But not only is Job a book of trial and tribulation, it's also a book of faith. But not only is it a book of trial and tribulation and a book of faith, it's also a book of what happens. When a child of God trials his, his tribulation, but yet he keeps his faith, his focus, his mind on God. But it's also a book of overcoming. You see, when you keep your mind uh, and your focus and your heart on God, only where one over you will overcome with more. God will bless you with more in the end than you had in the beginning. But that's only if you keep your faith and trust in God. Oh, so many of us when we go through our trials and our tribulations, we ask, we like to ask that question. Lord, have I not kept your commandments? Have I not done that which you have asked me to do? Have I not been pleasing and acceptable in your sight? And Lord, if I have been found pleasing and acceptable in your sight and I'm trying to do the best that I can. I'm trying to hold on to your unchanging hand. I'm keeping my trust and my faith in you. We ask that question, Lord, if I'm doing all these things, why am I going through this? Why am I 
are facing this tribulation? Why am I going through these various trials? Why am I being tested like I am? But I have a question. You ask that question, why me? You ask that question, why not me? Because when you're going through your trials and your tribulations and you keep your focus and your eyes on the prize, you keep the faith in him. You focus on the problem solved instead of the problem. You learn to focus on the storm calmer instead of the storm. Have thou considered my servant? The Bible tells us that there was a man by the name of Job. It, it, that doesn't mean that he didn't have flaws. That doesn't mean he didn't have sin in his life. That just means all that he did, he did in pleasing and trying to please the Most High God. He feared God. He loved God. God's commandment to the best of his ability. And he assumed evil. Means he stayed away from the very appearance of evil. Where evil was, he did not go near it. Oh. When God looked at us. Will God be able to say the same thing that he did, Joe? Will he be able to say there was a man in the land of South Carolina? There was a man in North Carolina. There was a man in the great state of Georgia. Or there was a man in the great state of New York. Great man in the state of Texas. And when you be out there to say whose name was Stevie R. Butler. Or whose name was Edward Bishop. Or when you be able to put your name in that sentence. There was a man in such a land and his name or her name is. Man of this woman was perfect and upright. They did all they could do to please the most high God. They feared God. They kept his commandments. They loved God without question. And that they stayed away from evil. To get your this evening, I want to ask that question. Have thou considered my servant? For there is none other like him in the land. Born unto him seven sons and three daughters. Job had a big family. Job was blessed beyond measure to the point where he was the richest in all the land. The Bible tells us his substance also was 7,000. Thousand camels and five hundred yoke of oxen and five hundred she asked in a very great household. 
So see, this man was the greatest of all the men in the East. Oh, in other words, Job had it going on. In other words, Job would probably be equated to Bill Gates of today. He would be equated with the Gucci of today. See where I'm going. That's how much Job had it going on. Job was eating good. Job was looking good. Job was dressing good. Job had it going on. And his son went and feasted in their houses. Everyone on his day. And sent and called for their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And it was so. One the days of their feasting was gone about. Did Job sit and sanctify them? And was up early in the morning and offered book offerings according to the number of them. But Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and thank God in their heart. Thus said Job continued. Job had such love for his family. Job had such adoration for his family. He said that my children may have sinned against the most high God and put God in their heart. But I am going to make an offering that God may forgive them. Because I love them so much. I did want to when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came among them. See, you got to watch out for Satan. Satan is split. Satan is smooth. Satan knows more about you than you know about yourself. Satan knows what to push to make you jump. So you have to be very careful with Satan. Satan uses the same three principles that he used in the Garden of Eden. The same three tricks he used then, he uses today. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye. In the pride of life. And the Lord said unto Satan, Which cometh thou? In other words, Satan, where are you coming from? What have you been up to? What are that's the fact that God didn't already know what Satan was doing because he did was going to say God knows about 
God knows the trick of the devil. That's why God gives us the weapon to fight against the devil because he knows we can't do it by ourselves. God wants to the peace to hold the whole armor of God. Wherewith we will be able to fight against the fiery dark of the wicked one. Oh, Satan is smooth. And then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth. And from walking up and down. Satan has one job. The Bible tells us that Satan is a accuser of the brethren. Oh, we're going to find out in the next few verses. Satan brings the accusation against Job. Satan tries to bring accusations against us. That's why the Bible tells us that Satan, in First Peter, the fifth chapter, verse number, that Satan is as a war lion, seeking whom he may devour. The Bible also tells us that Satan's desire is to shift us as weak. Satan only has one job. And he does his job very, very well. Oh. Let's look at a verse. And the Lord said unto Satan, Let thou consider my servant. When God looks at you, when God looks at me, when God looks at us as members of the body of Christ, when Satan looks, when God looks at us as his light in a dark world, when God looks at us, Will he see the blood of us? If we were on trial for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict us? When God looks at us, will he be able to say to Satan, See, it's a wonderful thing when God can brag to Satan about you and about me and about us. It's a wonderful thing that Job has found such favor in God's sight. God made a recommendation to Satan. Oh, when God looks at us, will he be able to say to the world and to Satan, has thou considered my servant? I consider it a great privilege. I consider it to be a great honor. When God can grab his face and say, how about in spirit? My servant. For there is none like him. For there is none like her. For there is none like them. And all the land. Or in all the earth. 
They are perfect. Oh, he is perfect. She is perfect. They are an upright people. And one that feareth God, loves God, keeps my keep God's commandments, and stays away from evil. The Bible tells us to avoid the very appearance of evil. Not to even go where evil may be present. Then Satan answered the Lord. Now I should. This is the accusation I was talking about just a few minutes ago. And then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God? In other words, is there re- not a reason on why Job fears you, loves you, keeps his commandments, keeps your commandments? There's a reason on why he's doing this. Oh, here's a question for us. For what reason are you following God on this evening? Is it out of love for God? Out of respect for God? Or is it simply because of the things that God has blessed you with? Oh, what is your motivation? For serving God is out of love, out of respect, out of what he has done for you, or are you doing it simply because of what he has blessed you with? That is the question. They didn't ask God. Then in verse number 10, he says, Has not thou made a hedge about him and about his house? In other words, Lord, the only reason he is serving you is because you protect him from everything. The only reason he is serving you is because of what you have blessed him with. Hast thou considered? But not only have you placed a hedge of protection around him, but you've done it around all his house and about all that he has on every side. In other words, the only reason he's serving you is because of what you blessed him with. The only reason he's serving you is because that you have given him. There is no other reason that he's serving you. He says, but I tell you what, take away all that he has. And because you have blessed the word of his hands. In other words, Lord, everything that Job does prospers. That's the only reason he's serving you. Now take away all that he has. And I guarantee you he will curse you to your faith. In other words, take away his blessing. Take away all that he has. And I bet you he'll curse you. Oh, I'm so glad 
said, God knows his faithful children. God knows those who are he. God knows them that will serve him no matter what situation they may be going through in their life. God knows them did I hear. And when God, so let's begin to ask that question. When God looked at you, would he be able to say to Satan, have thou considered my servant? For there was none other like him or her in the land. Now watch this. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in thy power, only upon his person. In other words, don't kill him. I'm so glad. Satan only has the power and the authority to do but so much. God only allowed Satan to do so much. God put a limit to Satan's power. God put a limit to Satan's authority. God, Satan cannot do more than God will allow. Uh-huh. Him too. Oh, see, you missed their shout right there. Satan only do what God allows him to do. So if God brings you to it, you can rest assured that God will bring you through it. Sit it. My servant. And the Lord says, Behold, all that he have is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth from the present, and there was a day. And his sons and his boys were eating and drinking wine in the eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And she being fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have saved the servants at the edge of the sword. And I only am a state alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came up another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven and have burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And only I am a state to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away. He and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone. Can you imagine losing everything you ever had or ever possessed in your life? Take away. All in one day. Job, second only to Christ, suffered the most. There was none person on this earth other than Christ, much as Job did. 
Jones lost all that he had. He lost his home. He lost his family. He lost his possessions. And he lost it all at the same time in one day. But yet and still, he trusts in God. He loves God. While he was yet speaking, there came also a mother and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their old brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness. And smote the four corners and fell upon the young men. And they did, and they are dead. And only I escaped alone to tell thee. Job was so sorrowful. Job was so hurt. Then he rose and rent his mantle and shaved his head. And fell down upon the ground and worshipped. Even though he had just lost every possession, he still fell down and worshipped God. Oh, God knows who to brag with. God knows. Those who are here. God knows who will be faithful in their trials and their tribulations. God knows who to consider. Oh, so I ask this question one more again. Have thou considered my servant? Now, had that would have been some of us. Like I said earlier, some of us would have been like, Lord? What, what's going on? Why am I going through this? Why am I suffering all this pain, all this heartache, and all this hurt? Why am I going through this trial? And why am I going through this tribulation? Am I doing something wrong? Am I left something undone? Have I seen that great thing? Not much of a big sin that all this has come upon me? Do you not love me anymore? Because if you love me, why am I going through this? Oh, I mean, we should have that mindset. Joe did. Naked I came out of my mother's room. And naked shall I return. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Bless the name of the Lord. When you're going through your trials and your tribulations, you should say, thank you, Lord, for you have considered me. Certainly. For you have considered me to be a true servant. Oh, has thou considered? My servant. Oh, my time is up for this evening. Next week, I will continue with part two, if it, if it is the Lord's holy and divine will. So thank you for your time and your attention. There's a land beyond the river that we call the sweet forever and we only reach that shore by faith's decree one by one we'll gain the portal there to dwell with the immortals when they ring those golden bells for and me 
There's a land, There's a land beyond the river that we call forever. And we only, only reach that shore by best decree. In that far, oh, just beyond the shining river. entitled Having an Active Faith. Having an Active Faith. A few years ago, I read an article concerning freedom in Christ. And while thinking about that, I became aware of a wonderful blessing. You know, under the old old law, the Jews were expected to keep hundreds of rules and regulations. You know, I realize that as Christians, while we are expected to keep commandments under the new covenant, the new Testament, we have the freedom, however, to choose the way we wish to serve God. That's right. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, this makes the Christian service joyous. So just for a few minutes this evening, we I want to discuss the importance of having an active faith, importance of having an active faith. You know, in the Hebrew letter, Hebrews chapter 11, is known as the faith chapter. But calling it the active faith chapter is also appropriate. Here, the writer reminds us of Noah, who lived in a time of great wickedness. Uh, Noah was commanded by the God of heaven to build a huge ark in order to save not only his family, but also the world's animals. This was no small undertaking, ladies and gentlemen. Not only was it physically challenging, but it took many years for Noah to build that ark. All who watched thought Noah was a foolish man. They had not seen rain, much less a flood. So they didn't understand what Noah was doing in the building of that great ark. Also, the Hebrew writer tells us of Abraham, who left his home when God called him. He was not even certain where to go. 
Can you think of a harsher climate than in the Middle East? With large families, with animals and all their belongings, it must have been a tremendous effort to move even a few miles. But ladies and gentlemen, Noah and Abraham are men who listen to God. I mean, they really believed God and followed his instruction. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here today with the hope of salvation because of men like Noah and Abraham's active faith. Most of us are familiar with uh, James chapter 2 and verse 26, where the Bible says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without work is dead also. Perhaps uh, less familiar is Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, where Paul says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Here we find our purpose as Christians. We were created, ladies and gentlemen, so that we can perform good works. My uh, speaker in the first segment, um, uh, Brother Melton, spoke regarding these good works. We were created to perform good works, ladies and gentlemen. Amazingly, our loving and uh, Heavenly Father has prepare these opportunities ahead of time. We have the choice of accepting these opportunities, but we are humbled that God would consider us even worthy. Ladies and gentlemen, our decisions to demonstrate an active faith serves a greater purpose. God tells us why we are to perform good works in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. Jesus says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. In heaven. But ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, after we obey the gospel of Christ, it is easy to become complacent in our Christian walk, becoming caught up in the problems of life. Our faith can sometimes grow weak, and we and we can neglect the opportunities to serve God. While we are usually motivated by God's love, fear of punishment is also effective. You know, Jesus Christ, our Lord, used the parable of the talents to warn against complacency and laziness when it comes to making use of our abilities and our opportunities. What happened to the man who hid his Lord's money? In Matthew 25 and verse 26, Jesus describes this man as a wicked and lazy servant. And this man was cast out into outer darkness in verse 30. The verses which follow in Matthew chapter 25 are sobering. Here, Jesus Christ, our Lord, is describing the judgment, and one's destiny was determined in very practical terms. Those who were blessed to inherit eternal life had cared for their fellow man. They cared for the man or the woman that was hungry and and thirsty. They cared for those who were sick, 
those who were homeless, those who were in prison, or those who were naked. Do you see yourself yet, ladies and gentlemen? Do you see yourself yet? Those who did not were rewarded with everlasting punishment. Jesus Christ, our Lord, said that when we care for others, it is as if we are caring for him. When we neglect others, ladies and gentlemen, we neglect Jesus Christ too. Our Lord expects us to have an active faith. Our Lord expects us to demonstrate our faith by our actions. James 2 and verse 18. James then reminds us in chapter 4 and verse 17. James says, therefore to him who knoweth to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. You know, over the years, I have seen Christians of all ages and backgrounds serving God in practical ways. Uh, The reminder of this lesson is a practical application of the scriptures. For the child, one of the best ways to serve God is by honoring and obeying their parents. Nothing honors a parent more than to hear from a teacher or neighbor that your child or your son or your daughter is so well behaved. While the child does not understand what faith means, the habit of obedience is developed. For the Christian teenager, it is a blessing to be a part of a youth group which serves others while having fun. Youth groups can uh, visit older people, those who may need help with cleaning the house or the yard, and, uh, and the blessings are mutual, ladies and gentlemen. After high school, we can demonstrate an active faith through our chosen vocations or doing higher education for those who can attend college. I think it's a blessing to attend a Christian school. However, many state universities have a Christian support group, and this can offer tremendous encouragement at a time when we become independent. I remember the wonderful congregation and Christian friends I had during my military service. For me, learning to lead during worship services was a blessing. I remember, ladies and gentlemen, when I was on active duty, uh, I I preached my first sermon uh, when I was stationed in Panama in 1989. And I was sharing the word of God on numerous deployments to Africa and to Bosnia and, and other countries I've had the opportunity uh, to visit. I was a soldier, ladies and gentlemen, but I was also a soldier in the army of the Lord. I was able to have numerous interactions with my soldiers doing Bible study and worship While we are deployed, ladies and gentlemen, I had a chance to let my light shine. Oh, what a blessing it was. But these were simple ways for me to put my faith in action. Whether we remain single or married and start a family, we can find opportunities to serve in our congregations by teaching and preparing communion, helping in the church office, holding a Bible study, inviting others to service, feeding the needed, donating clothes, or simply asking the church leadership, what needs to be done can I do? 
for those with young children. Getting in the habit of bringing our children to Sunday school is one of the difficulties, but most rewarding aspects of being a parent. Oh, I'm not saying it's easy, ladies and gentlemen. But during our middle years, it's, it's a blessing to be a part of a congregation with elders and deacons. By, by now, we know more about our talents and our strengths, our interests. You know, a deacon and his wife gain valuable experience in helping the church. This is the time when some with children are older and it becomes more convenient to open up our homes to others. Often we can be of tremendous assistance doing a vacation Bible school and other youth activities because we are older now. We are old enough to be more mature, but young enough to have the energy By now, we are often settled in our homes and our communities. There are many ways we can give back, glorifying God by our actions. As older adults, we usually have a little more time to put our faith in action. In the congregation, The younger ladies look up to the more mature ladies as examples of faith and service. Perhaps there is a time to attend the ladies' Bible class, visit those in the hospital, or prepare food and flower arrangements for various needs. Also, this is the time when we often begin to lose our friends to death. We can be an encouragement to the depressed, downhearted, and those who are facing financial hardships or difficulties with their children. But ladies and gentlemen, for the older man, this is the ideal time for self-reflection. Perhaps offering to serve as an elder in the congregation. This is also the time when an older gentleman may be an encouragement to the congregation's minister. Since the preacher is often overworked and goes through the same hardships as other folk in the congregation. Many older men and women are ideal teachers. In the community, there are ample opportunities to help our neighbors and those in need. Ladies and gentlemen, in our congregation, some with financial means help support uh, orphan homes and widows' ministry and uh, Bible camps uh, uh, where our youth interact and some respond to the gospel. So in summary of this lesson tonight, endless ways to amplify an active faith, demonstrate Christ in our life and bring glory to our heavenly father. Good works, which God has prepared for us are waiting. Just as in Matthew 25 and verse 23, we yearn to hear Our Lord say, well done. Oh, well done. My good and faithful servant. Amen. And I'll see you on the other side of the break. He says, peace.
from the Lord with your host, Stevie R. Butler. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the part of the broadcast where I want to extend the Lord's invitation. And the reason that I do this is because we just simply don't know who's listening to this show. We don't know what you've had an opportunity to hear in your lives. And I just don't want to um, go off the air and not tell people what they must do in order to be saved, because it's important that you obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you are not a child of God, just listen, ladies and gentlemen, one cannot be a child of God until you are a Christian, until you have been born again. As the Bible teaches, then you are lost outside of Christ. It's not enough to simply be religious. You must obey the commands of the Lord in order for a man to be saved. You must take heed and answer the gospel call. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. And verse 14, you must hear the gospel. John chapter 6 and verse 45, Romans chapter 10, verse 14 and 17. And the facts of the gospel are the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 3. You must believe the same. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, James chapter 2 and verse 24. You must repent. Luke chapter 13, verses 3 and 5. Acts chapter 17 and verse 30. You must confess your faith in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 and 33. You must be baptized in water for the remission or the forgiveness of your sins. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Acts 10, verse 48. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 21. And if you are a Christian and you've not been faithful in your service to God, you need to decide again. In Repentance and Prayer, Acts chapter 8 and verse 22. And we want to encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, to visit the Church of Christ in your area. Amen. And I'll see you on the other side of the break. Thank you. 
spending a little time with us this evening in a study of God's Word. I want to thank my special guest speaker, Dennis Lamar Melton. He did a great job. He always does a great job on the show. And I also want to thank my uh, co-host, Edward Bishop. He always does a great job in his presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ as well. I certainly appreciate these brothers for coming on to the broadcast this evening and presenting their lessons on this show. It is my prayer, ladies and gentlemen, that these lessons this evening have been beneficial to your spiritual lives and that your relationship with the Lord has been strengthened because you are tuning in to this broadcast and you have given yourselves over to a study of God's word. So until we meet again, I pray God's continual blessings upon your lives and that he bless you real, real good. Good night, everybody.
Everything that you do 